Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Just Come Back to Allah by Hamza Yusuf on the channel Blue Peace. This is a video recommendation coming from a viewer of mine during my last live stream. Guys, I'm streaming every single Sunday. Now I'm going to try to stream even twice, God willing. I don't know what this video is about, but I can already imagine that it is a call to Islam and that it is a call to God, of course. So with no further ado, let's have a look. Religion is here to unite us. It's not here to divide us. And if it's dividing us, it's not God's religion. It's something else. And and so it's a I would agree with this statement. Truth should unite us. Religion in general, if we are speaking about different religions, cannot unite us. I'm against the ecumenical movement. I'm against interfaith movements. I don't see any value in it when people pretend that all religions are right and therefore we can unite. Of course, we can be good neighbors. Of course, we can be friendly to people. We can be loving people. But we cannot just accept that every religion is is true. Either one religion is right or all the religions are wrong and have maybe partial truths within them. There is no other option. So if a Muslim claims that Islam is right, Christianity cannot be correct, Judaism cannot be correct and vice versa. And this is why again I'm against the interfaith movement. I'm against uniting religious people under falsehood. We can only unite under truth. Other other than that, we can stay allies. And and so it's a great blessing to be in a place just where you feel comfortable. And you don't have to worry about somebody telling you you're not doing this right. You know, and, and if somebody did correct you, it would be out of love and not out of this arrogant, pious, self-righteous attitude of superiority. Sure, sure. And so this type of religion... Here I agree, of course, I think we should correct each other so we stay firm on the straight path. But of course, that should come from love. It could come as a brotherly advice, if you will, but you should definitely stand corrected if you're straying off the core doctrine. We have to fight it, really, because it's killing the soul of the Muslims. And it's all over the place now. You know, these memes to use... Uh, Dawkins, I don't really like to use Dawkins terms, but you know, he came up with the idea of memes that are like viruses, intellectual viruses. Uh, and, and we've got these intellectual viruses that are making our community sick. And we really need to, you know, wash our hands, you know, in order not to get, right? You wash your hands. We have to clean our, you know, really purify ourselves. We didn't reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that to His Prophet. We did not re re reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. The, the mukhalifa, the understanding, the reverse understanding is anzalnahu li tas'ad. We revealed this book to make you happy. So if Islam is not making you happy, something's wrong with your Islam. And if you're making other people unhappy, you know, woe unto you for driving people out of Islam. You know, and there are people that are driving people away from Islam. And this is, we're in the end game, people. I mean, if you don't see that, I don't know what planet Yeah, you're I don't know if I fully agree with this message because it can be applied in all kinds of ways. Yet again, if you are supremely zealous and you believe that only your way is right and therefore you come with arrogance and you're boastful, of course, I would agree with this message. But yet again, if there is a religion, then there must be a standard to that religion. And then within that religion, there must be a right and wrong and not a whatever works for you, bro. And this is why if people really stray off the path, they should be correct. 
corrected. One channel that I've been watching lately is The Muslim Skeptic, and I absolutely appreciate what he does with his work on dismantling Islamic liberalism. Because me, looking from the outside into the religion of Islam, what I appreciate is that it's absolutely opposite of liberalism, that it's against it, that it is conservative in a sense, for the lack of better words. And therefore, to correct those people that want to reform a religion is only right. We're living on. Of course. We're coming down to end game. Maybe it's 100 years from now, maybe it's 200, I don't know. Those things are in the knowledge of God. But our Prophet said, I was sent and, and the end of time are like these two. And he put his wusta and his sababa together, just like that. I was sent and the hour is like this. That was 1400 years ago. And in terms of how long humans have been here, it's not a long time, 1400 years. It's, a, it's a, just a flash. So this is a time for people to have a lot of rahab, you know, just expansiveness in their hearts for people. Baza, Baza, I wish I could quote it in, in Persian, but you know, we're in the city of Maulana, Jalaluddin, and he, he has a beautiful qasida which is in the entrance to his maqam. Come, come again, come. You know, whatever you've done, this isn't a caravan of despair. You know, sinner, if you've broken your vow a thousand times, just come back. The door's open, and anybody that closes it is a shaitan. You know, and there's people closing that door on people that need to hear that message. You know, because this world can defile you, but no matter how defiled you are, Allah's door is open. No matter sure. what's happened to you, Allah's door is open. I mean, we have testimony in the hadith to a mass murderer who was given toba. He killed a hundred people and he was given toba. Hudayf al Yamani, he said, the end of time won't come until the Muslims are like a big rock in a river. They don't drink from it and they don't let other people drink from it. And he said, and the one seeing it is not like the one telling it. So don't be like that rock that doesn't let the river flow and let people drink from it. This people need, they're dying of thirst out there. They're dying of spiritual thirst. This door is open and people, we need to open it up and let people come in with all their faults and all their flaws and all their dysfunctionalities and all their problems. Just open the door and let people come in. Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. I have to say that I'm not very impressed with this message. I do understand that God's door is always open for us. If we want to repent, we can storm to God and He will be gladly there waiting for us. Of course, absolutely no doubt in my mind. But when we are speaking about opening the doors to everybody, just come in. Hey, it shouldn't be closed for you. Just come in. It depends. Are you coming in with repentance into the religion? And are you coming into the religion with the willingness to learn? If not, why would you enter that religion? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It reminds me of the Catholics opening up their doors to the LGBTQ community, hanging those flags and twisting their own doctrine in order to appeal to the masses. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever and it will downplay the true core message of their religion. And the same applies, of course, to Islam. Let me give you another example. Karate, back in the day, used to be a legit martial art. Believe it or not, there were even tournaments where Muay Thai fighters fought against karatekas and it was an even match. Back in the day, it was a real martial art. But then when the boom happened in America, school after school started opening up after they saw those karate movies. And so now those schools started competing with each other. And what did they start to do? They started giving out belts for no achievement whatsoever. After two years, a child could be a karate black belt. Absolutely ridiculous. If you look into jiu-jitsu nowadays, thank God we still don't have that. A blue belt means something.
something. A purple belt means something. A brown belt means something. A black belt means something. If you go into that jujitsu school, you apply those rules onto you and you let jujitsu transform you. That makes sense. So, hey, what is it today? Gi class. We're putting on a gi. Today is no gi class. We're putting on a rash guard. All of that makes sense. So, now, if I want to wear a unicorn horn and a pink leggings, then I'm not allowed to enter. Very, very simple. That door stays closed for me because I am not willing to adapt jiu-jitsu onto my life. I'm not willing to submit myself to the rule set of jiu-jitsu. And the same goes for religion. I come from Orthodox Christianity. I do understand what the law said within Orthodox Christianity is. And now I do see, okay, I do not agree with those law sets. So I either have to change if I want to stay within that religion, or I will have to look for another religion. It is that simple. And this is why, yet again, for the thousandth time, I am taking my time with Islam. I'm truly trying to understand Islam with all its facets. Will I be able Able to submit myself to this religion. If not, then that religion is not for me. Very, very simple. I'm not here to change Islam. That is so ridiculous, so hypocritical, so arrogant. And this is what we see with so many people nowadays. The Quran speaks of them and calls them the reformers. And I would never want to be one of those. And I would never want people like that to storm into Islam because Islam is a strong religion. And I personally, even not being a Muslim, would like it to stay that way. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.